And Jesus said to Bartholomew, What do you want from me? And he said, Lord, I want to see. In the first reading today, the prophet Jeremiah speaks about those people who really were left behind after the exile of Babylon. Remember when the Pocasitor came and take Jerusalem, he took the most strong people, he took all their goods, and off he went. And then he left behind the lame, the blind, and those who are not good. Because what do you need? You need to build. You need to have, have them as slaves. If they cannot produce, why need why take them with you? And Jeremiah said, even from this blind, even from this lame, God is going to form his people. He is going to call the people from all parts of the world and bring them back home. And because of this, we rejoice. And we rejoice because the Lord will fulfill his promise. In the gospel today, we find that Jesus himself also is trying to speak on the same line of Jeremiah. When he was going down from Jericho and he is coming, and all of a sudden he encountered this blind man. And this blind man reached out to him and said, Lord, son of David, have pity on me. Those titles we use them at hands. Hosanna in Bindav, Hosanna to the son of David. Why? Because David was the promise of the fulfillment. God made a promise with David that from his loins he will bring the great redeemer of the world. And because he is the son of David, he now is going to have mercy because mercy was given to David after he acknowledged his sinfulness. And that's what Bartholomew said to Jesus after Jesus questioned him, what do you want me to do for you? And that same question is being put to you and to me. What do you want Jesus to do for you? And you say, Lord, the time I see. Many people think that blindness is the physical blindness. We are talking about the spiritual blindness. We are talking about that blindness that sometimes we put in front of our eyes not to see with the eyes of God. How many times we ignore people? How many times we shut people down? How many, people, how many times we feel that we are better than people? How many times we feel that really we don't need any healing in our lives? Little we know that before we begin Mass, we all confess we are sinners and we claim that it's our fault and we ask God's mercy. And because of that, like Bartholomew, we come to Mass for that mercy. That God will shower upon us that mercy that we need. The mercy for our personal sin. The mercy that we have done with our ignorance, sometimes even with our will, that we have done evil in His eyes. And that's why today I like to focus on that second reading, because in that second reading you are going to see the theme of today's liturgy. This weekend is called the weekend of the priesthood. When we pray for those who are consecrated, for those who are ordained, that the Lord will continue to bless them and also will continue to give us men who discern their vocation and serve us at the altar. And listen to what the author of the Hebrews tried to say to us. Every high priest is taken from among men and made represent before God to offer gifts and sacrifice for sin. So that is exactly the definition of a priest. A priest is not a priest who run bingo and run parish councils and run parishes. A priest was ordained to celebrate Mass and also to absolve people from confession. That is the nature of the priesthood. And then we attach a lot of things to the priesthood, to pastor and priest, because many people does not want to take orders from one another. But this is the idea of the church today. That in the congregation we have people who are better off than us, who have talents in, in, in finance, uh, they have talents in communication, they have talents in organizing, and they don't need me to do so. I am there to support them, but don't misunderstand me, but it is the laity that really comes up now and take that responsibility. We need to understand that is the call of the council. The council, Lumen Gentium, speak to us in chapter 37. I quoted last Sunday too, 
because it's very important to understand. When the council said to the bishop, Bishop, make sure you identify the call of the priesthood. That means that you have priests who are assigned to you and they are ordained because of you, because nobody can become a priest without a bishop. And because they are assigned to you, be a father to them and see in them the talents they have. And as you put them in the right places where they can do good, they in return, as pastors, they are going to see the good in the community and enhance the community to do the best they can to form a very solid and vibrant church. The parish is not the pastor, the parish is you. You and the pastor working together for one common goal. And that is to bring the parish to understand that we are called by God for a very important job. And that is to call each one of us to come closer to Jesus. And by our initiative that we have in baptism, we are immersed to be called to be sent to bring others to Jesus.